Okay, so I've got I've got the first part uh, exporting. It's going to take another hour or something. So we get started on this. So I've got it, I've had it running for the past I don't know half hour or so, and now the uh, thermal paste is set. So I'm not going to wiggle it too much because it'll still break, but it's good enough. I think we'll we'll swap the switch out. Let's let's get the dislikes out of the way already. So let me power this off. Um, let's get rid of this nine volt cable. So this cable just takes nine volts uh, from the input over to the expansion edge expansion user user port user port user port. Okay, power it off. So for these uh, Euro ones, to get this um, so this um, side panel off, you need to desolder the uh, the power input, which is not a not a big deal. So just desolder that. Then there's two screws, and it comes off. So let me just do that quickly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Extreme close up. Okay, is that all enough? Yeah, that's all well enough. Make it look difficult. Okay, that's done. Now the two screws. bit comes off relatively clean don't need to give it a give it any real wash now let's get the switch off oh actually so first of all we'll give it a let's reflow okay so we've got two parts here we've got oh sorry you can't see Got the bit here at the front for mechanical strength, and then we've actually got the electrical part here. So these are pretty easy to fix as well. You can, um, you know, if it's not working, you can actually open them up, give them a clean, relubricate them. Like I said, a, a pretty simple switch. So even if yours isn't working, don't don't necessarily have to run out and buy a new one. Just might have to give it a bit of a clean. Oops, sorry. Oops. Okay, let's see how we go with this. Come on. No, okay, what about the contacts then? Oh, it's not, <laughs> not, at, not at temperature yet. Okay, so I've got it set on 330 degrees Celsius. Seems to work okay. So you want to make sure you heat the solder on both sides. Let the heat flow through. It's 
so you can suck it up. It looks like this one's still got some solder on. Yeah, we'll see how we go. Okay, let's see how we go with these. coming off. Alright. Try not to knock the camera out. Alright, a little bit more. Um, okay, so yeah, I think just heat it up with the soldering iron. Oh, I could probably actually heat it up with this with the desoldering gun again that might be easier to hold and then just lever it out and hold it and do the other one and move it out a little bit hold it so slowly it's coming out hold it while we'll solder almost got there alright I'll stop filming and get this finished off so I'm sure this is terribly exciting okay so I've got the first part done it's just the actual contacts at the back that I need to get off I don't know if I can push them through heat them up and push them through I'll continue this. There we go. I think off camera. Oh yeah, that made a bit of a hero. Because obviously the um, screwdriver is going to act as a big heat sink, so I'll take a lot of the heat out. Mm. Alright, let me finish this off. This is going to be a bit boring. And it is done. So there we go. Don't need that anymore. <laughs> no, I keep this. Um, so like I said, you just need to, if you want to open this up and fix it, if, if it's having problems, you just need to open up, maybe not with a pointed thing like this, <laughs> maybe with a, a small flathead screwdriver. You just need to open the tabs up on there and there and then you can open up this the middle open this up on either side bring this up and then you can get the switch out and there's a there's a metal contactor down here um, so you can give it a good uh, spray so what do I use I've got I've got an electrical clean and lube so you can give that a spray out and then um, or maybe just re-lubricate it yeah, so that's I'll, I'll do that anyway with this uh, with this switch. I'll add it to my collection that I'll probably put on eBay or something one day. I don't know. Okay, so for the replacement, like I said, this is the one I like to use. 
uh, which way is, I assume that's on. So you, obviously you want to make sure you stick it in the right way around. <laughs> so like that. So it almost, almost fits. So you just need to, um, you just need to, um, not sand, uh, file. File a couple of mil either side, which I'll do now. Whew, okay. So fold either side, just and kept checking, obviously. So if you wanted to be pedantic, you could take this out and then respray this. Um, maybe respray it from this side so that, yeah, you don't have the bare metal there. But I assume this won't be used uh, in the sea. So that now uh, on that way, yep. Squeeze it in like that. Um, so as you can see, this one's got lugs, so you could put some lugs on here and then solder it. Solder it there, that way, uh, well, the, the thing is, you know, uh, are you going to be taking this off again? If so, then okay, I would solder, lug, I would put lugs on here and then solder it into there. But for me, I'm not fussed. Um, yeah, you know, you gotta, yep. Yeah. So, what I think I'll do is I think I'll, I'll solder up wires on here first. Um, install it and then solder it into there. Okay, there we go. Much, in my humble opinion, much nicer action. And um, actually one other thing you can do, particularly with this, with this type of uh, Vic, um, is you can also put in a 2.1 mil um, uh, DC socket uh, probably you got to be careful because the case as well comes down a bit so you could probably you might be able to squeeze it in there um, and that way like for example I'm using an adapter that I 3d printed so that plugs into there no worries but instead of doing that you can put a 2.1 mil socket there and then obviously you can just plug directly in and then you just run you just run it over to here um, or like I said you can bypass bypass all of this and just go straight to that but let's just go to there so I think I might actually do that before I put this back on so that goes in so I'll go in like that it's actually a bit tight Uh, I was debating whether to use this this wire or a smaller wire. Get through the hole. Like that. Solder it in. And then stick it on. And it's all good. Um, so yeah, let's have a look. Let's get the case. Actually, I'll screw it back on. We'll get the case. Okay, now that we've got the case on, what we can do is I can make a small mark, maybe. <laughs> do I see that? Yep, I can just see it. I could maybe do it with pencil or pen or something. I see that. Mm. Okay, actually, so you can probably see. I haven't screwed the circuit board back down again. Just gone in a bit, so I could probably, yeah, okay. Just go in line with with the AC AC um, socket. So you don't want you want it there. All right. 
let's do that then. Turn the light on and I can see things. So, for the socket, uh, I've got two types I can I could use. I've got I've got this one here, which pushes in, or I've got this one here, which uh, screws in. So let's undo, let's undo the screws again. Just thinking, I probably should have, in hindsight, put this on last, so I don't have to worry about knocking it out, knocking it around. Doesn't matter. Okay. Let's just pull that out. So it can't be any higher than there. So if I do this one here, we've got to see how we're going to hold it there. Yep. You can see it's just in line. So this one should be okay. Put it so we can stick it over there. Trying to figure out where the best place. Yeah, probably a although if I stick it there it's gonna be yeah, you're gonna have to squeeze it in. Um I think sometimes I've put it, yeah, sorry, it's a bit slippery. <laughs> sometimes I've kind of put it there. Um, look, I might not worry about it for now. Um, but it is something I think is worthwhile doing. It just makes it simpler. If you don't have one of these power, if you don't if you can't worst case actually let me show you what you can do okay worst case is you could probably get one of these um iec c7 plugs or i.e a clover leaf and um i think this one you should be able to do it it's just um so this one i've got set up for a, a us or as i've been told an australian style one or japanese vic 1001 uh, but if we cut out, if we cut out this middle connector thing like so. Um, you want one that's kind of flexible, like this. I think this is a flex, kind of a flexible one. Like I have got another. I'll put it away now. I'll put it away because I don't need it here. So I kind of cut it out like that. And I think... We'll see on this one. Because <laughs> I have done it before and it's kind of fit okay. So there we go. I'll cut out the middle bit there. Let's have a look. Like that. And, oh, it's a bit hard, this one. Yeah, I think the problem with this one is that, yeah. I think the problem with this one is the holes are just too small for the pins. So let me actually, now that I'm going down this road, let me just prove to you. Let me find another one. Okay, what about this one? So this is one I've done before. You can see it's just, what I've done is I've got a C7 plug chopped it off and then soldered on a 2.1 mil socket and then used glued heat shrink everywhere to make a nice little plug so this one should yeah i think this one looks a bit wider okay it is yeah it's going in a, it's a little easier um, obviously you don't want to obviously it's easier for me because i'm pushing in like this when it's on the board, you don't want to be pushing in too hard, but I think that's probably probably enough. So at a pinch, you could get away with a C7 plug. All right, yeah, I won't put a socket. I won't put a socket on here. Um, I could always do it on the case. 
I could always put it on the case. All right. All right, let's, okay, we'll bend this idea. Let's put this one, let's put the sockets away. And let's get this plug back on. Okay, there we go. All back together. So that should do the job. And there we go, nice. That is, yeah, that is a really nice action. Uh, oh, and just obviously don't forget the power, <laughs> power socket. Just stick that back on there. Stick that back on there. Okay. One done. Both done there. Okay. Um, so that's that done. Um, I just remembered, uh, depending on the type of keyboard you've got, you've got to be careful of um, how high this is. Yeah, I think that's going to be a problem with the pet, with the pet style keyboard coming down. I think that's just enough space as it is. So if you're to go and stick on this replacement so that's going to be basically sitting at that level um we're sitting at that level so if you then put a socket on this and then a, an eprom in that it's going to be too high ideally you want it to be the same height as this um which way does it go like that so Got to go cut up the potatoes for mash tonight. So that's going to go in here like that. About the same level probably. And then a chip on top. So I think that might be as high as you're going to be able to get it. Um, I can certainly show you one I've done before. Yeah, let me just quickly go get it. Here we go. <laughs> so actually there, that's that's what I've done in this one here. You can see I've got the got that and I've got then the input socket. So you can bypass that one. But I think um, because this has got a Commodore uh, a 64 keyboard, I think there's enough space there yeah because I think that's the difference oh, sorry it's all plugged in I think this gap here is all the difference you look on the pet style keyboard it's all it's all the one level whereas on these these newer keyboards you can see you've got that gap there and that gap is what you need to be able to fit you can see this is a bit of a multi-level multi-pause just let me get it out without breaking anything there we go so you can see this is quite a a multi-level job <laughs> so just trying to think It might be the case that you have to get rid of the socket on the board and get rid of the socket here. Although you might be able to get away if you just get away with the, if you get rid of the socket there. So you're gonna to have to program, program the chip and hope it works. And then solder it into here. And then you can stick it into here. And you can see here what I've I've also I've um, 
made I probably should have made them vertical so that you can select select the ROMs. Does that make sense? Um, yeah, so you can see in this one here that I've um, I've got the socket connected through to the power. So um, yeah, it makes it easy. You don't have to worry about the polarity because you're going through the regulator, uh, the rectifier. Yeah. So there we go. That's an example of that. So I need to think about that one. Um, but certainly if you want to use Jiffy DOS, you need you need one of these. So all right, so I know, I know what I, I know what we can do. We can I, I can solder in the legs here, then I can just stick a chip in. We can stick it in there and we can see if the case closes. All right, we'll do that after I've done the potatoes. Okay, uh, remind me I need to order more of those. So, hmm. I don't know what kernel that is, if that's NTC or not. So for this, I need to, I need to bridge R2 and R3, and I need to put a 10K resistor across R1. Then I can put the legs on, I think. Stick it over there. Um, here's my 10K resistors. All right, let me just do that quickly. So again, using the flux. So much easier with flux. Okay. Oh, I need a. I need a new applicator. Okay, let me just get those started. Then I'll get the legs on, and then we'll see if this is going to fit with a pet keyboard. Okay, let's see how I go. <laughs> Where the hell did they go? <laughs> All right, <laughs> let's get another one. Um, I'm sure this is not the right way to do it. I haven't, I haven't done these for a while. Okay, I'm on. Just pop out. There we go. All right. Okay. I can barely see this. <laughs> it's all blurry. Ah, uh, bugger. Bugger, bugger, bugger. Get off. Get off the soldering line. All right. Let's try that again. <laughs> Just a little bit of heat. Warm that up. Stick that down. That's all you had to do, Brett. You've got to be a perfectionist. There we go. How's that? There. There. You moved it, didn't you? How does that look? Probably see it better than I can. <laughs> ah, that's an angle. All right. Anyway, let me finish this off. Okay, how does that look? <laughs> I think it looks all right. I've just checked. It is still 10K, so it, I haven't damaged it by too much heat. And um, now to put on the legs so it's the shorter ones that go into the vic and then it's the longer ones that are the eprom so it'll like go in like that okay got the legs in ready to go ready to solder them so i like to chop them off so that um close your eyes obviously <laughs> 
uh, so they're as flush as possible. Ah, um, ah, okay, there's going to be one issue. Yeah, there's going to be one, one issue. One issue that normally I solder the inside, so I'll do I'll do the inside here, do the inside there, because it's quite hard to solder once these once these legs are done. So th so say we do the outside ones here, then it's very hard to solder solder these inside ones. Um, that's the only problem. That's why it's easy just to solder. Yeah, it's it's hard to get in there. Although I should be able to. Oh, sorry, my arm's in the way. Well, I should be able to. I should be able to do it. Well, I'll we'll have to try anyway. Okay, first bit's done. Um, let's stick. Let's stick the original one on. All right, I'll stick the original one in, stick in the so socket, and see if we can close the lid. We end up with something like that. That's probably the lowest profile we can do. Um, yeah, all right. Okay, done. So <clears throat> the kernel and Jiffy DOS are 8K each, so it's a 16K ROM, 27C128 in this case. Um, let's see if I can solder it on without having to make a new one. I just need to clasp the legs. Together. It's a bit better. Uh, goes that way. I should also um, a little bit more. Should also put the hair on, shouldn't I? A little bit more. There we go. All right, let's see how we go with soldering those on the inside. Okay, back in a minute. Okay. We are done. Chiffy DOS and Power Kernel. Let's see if it works. Actually, the last thing I need to do for this is just wire up a switch. So I've got a four-way cable. Um, Already done from AliExpress. It just goes on like that. And I just need basically the two outer ones. So I normally just um, pull these two middle ones out. Um, yeah, so I just need basically ground and the A13 address line. So I'll do all that. I think I just need to lift that up a bit, don't I? Lift that up. Lift a bit of plastic up. And then pull it out. There we go. That one too. Anyway, you know what I mean. <clears throat> yeah, so this is the switch I like to use. Uh, spade, I guess. It's just because it's a nice action. So I just basically wire this up to 
two of them. Um, yeah. Um, that's, yeah, that's all we have to do. Okay, there we go, ready to go. So I've got the switch in one position and it's got Jiffy DOS. Turn it off. Change the switch. And we're back to normal, normal kernel. So now that's done. Oh, so what are we? Here we go. 1.07 amps, 9.64 watts. So we're down a little bit, about 20 milliamps. Um, yeah, 16 point, no, 160 milliwatts. So I don't think the original doesn't make that much difference, but it certainly did get hot. So, um, but still, yeah, another power saving. On our way to get under one amp. That's what I'm trying to do, get us under one amp. Okay, so, let's say these two we can swap in a similar way, new ROMs. Uh, we can swap this for a 65C22, uh, 65CO2, but I don't have any of those. Um, and these three fellows, but these require a bit extra work because they need to be desoldered. Okay, getting there. Or I might, uh, might call it a night for this one, for this part. Um, you see, oh, tantalizingly close to being under an amp. Um, yeah. So I've, I've had it running for a while and like I said, these are room temperature, these 65C22s, room temperature, ouch, 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 uh, not too bad, not too bad, nothing. So hang on, let me just set up, let me just pause. No, let's not pause. <laughs> let's just go in the holder there. So, um, definitely, um, definitely, I think next part, I'm going to swap these three out. That'll get us under an amp, I'm pretty sure, because these are, yeah, they are running hot. Where's my temperature gauge? I put it away. So I've done, I've done a, I've done a whole bunch of videos. Anyone that on reducing power uh, consumption in the Vic. So let's, um, what's the best way of doing this? I don't know. You can't see that. No, that's not too bad. Oh, I can't see it. Let me turn that off. So thirty, the Vic. The 65, 61 is 35 degrees, which is pretty good. I've, I've measured the the plastic dip ones as up to 50. Um, 6502, that's not right. There's the max, that's what we want. 42, uh, basic, yikes. 48, <laughs> that's the basic ROM. Uh, the replacement kernel ROM, which is a 25C, 256, 35 degrees. Uh, character ROM. It's our max. 44 degrees. And like I said, the the VIAs. Are they VIAs in the BBC and they're called PIAs in this? I can't remember. Anyway, so yeah, just about ambient. hard to do the regulator so oh yeah and what about these buffers yeah they're hitting 48 48 degrees so they will definitely well, so i need to order these in so these will be the next three i think i might have some character roms i might have had some of those made up i don't know Yep. Okay. I hope that helps. Um, I think that's it. Yeah. Oh, part one of uh, part one's now available. So that yeah. Anyway. Anyway. Bye for now.